Hi everyone and welcome to Rum Runner Dance. I'm Dan Genovese. Today we're going to be making a classic tiki cocktail, Chief Lapu Lapu. The Chief Lapu Lapu, unlike other tiki drinks, actually has origins in a real story and a real person. So why build a drink around a chief? Well, before we get into who Lapu Lapu was and why he was famous, we need to start back a little bit further. So let's go back to 1500s, specifically 1519 in Spain. There's a ambitious Portuguese sailor, Ferdinand Magellan, who wants to find and swears that he can find another way through to the East Indies other than going around Africa, which is what everyone was used to. He was convinced that if you sailed west rather than sailing east, you would find you would get there faster. So that was his goal. Well, he couldn't convince the Portuguese to let him do it, so he went to Spain. Spain said, sure, we'll give you a shot. So they gave him some ships, gave him some men, off you go. Well, we all know about the story of Ferdinand Magellan and circumnavigating the globe, right? Wait, did he or did he not? Well, he did, his body made it at least, but did he make it? Eh. Well, probably not, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Along his route, he had an objective. It wasn't just about finding a passage, it was also about claiming territory, and in this case, claiming territory for Spain. Many of the places that he happened to find and who he talked to was pretty easy to get them to bend the knee. Um, but he came upon a small island, Mactan, which is now in the Philippines, in part of the Philippine Islands. On that island was a chief, Chief Lapu Lapu. And what did Lapu Lapu do when presented with this, well, gift or proposition from Magellan? Well, he refused. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to bend the knee. He didn't want to give up power. He liked what he was doing. He enjoyed being the chief. and. His people were happy the way they were. They didn't want to become part of Spain. So a battle ensued. And during this battle, the, uh, Magellan fought Lapu Lapu and his warriors. Well, Lapu Lapu and his warriors had the superior numbers, but Magellan thought that he could beat him because he had superior armors and weapons. Uh, many a time do heroes fall. I shouldn't say heroes. Many a time do prideful soldiers fall in the face of arrogance, thinking, my gun is stronger than your bamboo spear. I'm going to win. I don't care how many men that you have. Yeah, it didn't help him. It didn't help him at all, actually. And eh, another person who made that fatal mistake, General Custard. Uh, well, so... Let's get back to Magellan and Lapu Lapu. During the battle, a poison arrow hit um, Magellan and he ended up afterwards getting sick, getting a fever, and he died. Um, so he didn't make it along with a few of his other men didn't make it either. Enough men didn't make it that they actually had to leave a ship behind um, and they couldn't because they didn't have enough people to man it. They took the rest of them and they, his men continued the voyage around the world and finished it and brought his body back. But he was not alive for the complete circumnavigation. He died partway through. And it was really because of his interaction with Lapu Lapu as to why that came to a head. Now, that's kind of a sad story. So why are we writing, uh, why, why would we have a tiki drink now about a person in a battle who killed another person. Well, let's think back here a little bit. 
When you're going back through history, it's really easy to remember that a lot of these colonies and colonization from bigger countries, they kind of control a lot of these islands and use them as basically cash cows. They didn't care much about the people or how many died. The only thing they cared about is where they getting the products, the sugar, the rum, the gold, the spices, where are they getting it to fill the coffers of their economy? To give you a point of reference, the country of the island of Hispaniola, which today makes up both Haiti and Dominican Republic, that island was underneath French rule. To give you an idea of the dependence of these European countries on a colony and on a single island and how much value it can have, a million people, a million, at that time in France were either directly or indirectly impacted for their livelihood just based upon the sugar that came out of Hispaniola to France. That's why these countries wanted to go and gobble up all these different Caribbean islands and places where they could grow these exotic things that people really wanted because they can make a lot of money. Does that make it right? No, it doesn't. And Lapu Lapu stood up against that and he became a hero. A hero in the eyes of all the Philippine people. If you go to the Philippine Islands, you can easily see lots of statues erected all across the country to Chief Lapu Lapu because it was his stance against the Spanish and the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan that slowed the colonization of the Philippine Islands for quite some time afterwards. It was about 40 years afterwards where they finally were colonized. Uh, but he stood as a folk hero, someone who stood against oppression and uh, another country's rule who basically wanted to objectify their entire people and just exploit the resources of their island. So with that backstory, now I think hopefully you can appreciate a little bit more as to why we have a drink to this great Filipino hero, Chief Lapu Lapu, and how he is so important, not just in the tiki world, but also in history as well. So with that, why don't we get to making this awesome drink? So today we're gonna do drink mixer. All right, so drink mixer, we're gonna start off with juices. So we have some fresh orange juice. We're gonna need three ounces. Okay. Next, fresh lemon juice. We're gonna need two ounces. Next, we're gonna use two different kinds of syrup here today. The first one is passion fruit syrup. Um, equal, very easy to make. You can buy high quality ones. Um, you can just get some passion fruit juice or nectar and put in equal parts with that uh, with simple syrup and then you have passion fruit syrup. Also you can buy high quality ones online if you don't feel like making it. We just need an ounce. Next, plain old simple syrup. I always use two to ones. You can use one to one, one ounce. Next, we're gonna get into our base spirits. A split base here. First is a light rum. Um, I would say good, high quality, lightly aged rum. Doesn't have to be clear, um, but uh, Denison Three Star is clear and has tremendous flavor. Just so you know, one of the rums in here comes from Trinidad and Tobago from a little famous place you might know, uh, Angostura Distillery. Yeah, they give them some of the rum that goes in here. You're gonna need an ounce and a half of lightly aged rum. Next, we're gonna go for a dark Jamaican rum. Uh, you can do a dark Jamaican pot stilled rum here, great one, Hamilton. Um, today, I'm using Blackwell. Another great one that you can use, Karuba. Um, I can't get my hands on Karuba. I saw it like three times in Chicago and now I can't find it. I really envy like my friend Ian, who's <laughs> down there in Kansas City and uh, 
he always has a bottle of Karuba, and I'm like, man, wish I had a bottle of Karuba. Ounce and a half of dark Jamaican rum. Okay. That takes care of our ingredients. Now, we're gonna need to add in some ice here. This one, we're gonna do crushed ice, pebble ice, whichever one you got. Uh, 12 ounces. To me, that is two scoops. Flash blend this for about four seconds. All right, now let's go ahead. We're gonna wipe down our board here a little bit. Down, great. Next, what we're gonna do is start to talk here a little bit about this mug. Oh, I don't know if I've used this mug on the channel yet, to be honest with you. I'm starting to get to the point where I kind of forget all the things that I used on the channel. Um, but uh, this mug is fantastic. This is the Rummy Mummy mug that comes from Big's Tiki's. Um, so he is out there in Las Vegas, tattoo artist, amazing ceramicist here, as you can tell. Got some scarabs, you got some good like, you know, you can peek in through here. You got some bones getting revealed. And then you got this big grin on his face. And he's like, give me that drink. Um, I love using him for the cheap Lapu Lapu. Why? Because cool mug, nice, big, tall size. This is a big drink, so you want a larger mug. And this happens to be one of my favorites to put in large drinks. So Woodrow Coaster, going to put that guy down here. Put our mug on there. Dump all this in here. Now, we're gonna to top this off with some crushed ice. All right, let you take care of that. Now, we're gonna garnish this up. We're gonna do a little bit of a different garnish than we normally do. Uh, so first thing I like to do is kind of make this into a little bit of a crown um, to kind of represent the fact that well, this is a chief, so it's Chief Lapu Lapu's drink. So we want to make this a little bit more regal. Uh, so what I like to grab here is a couple pineapple fronds or pineapple leaves, get some good ones that you have, and uh, arrange them up fan them out, and then what we're gonna do is take them just like this, and we're gonna tuck them right down into the drink, just like that. Love the way that looks, spread that out. Next thing we're gonna do here is I got some nice big Ceylon cinnamon sticks. I'll put a link to these below. I get them off of Amazon. Uh, I got a new Amazon storefront um, where you can pick up all the stuff that I, uh, that I use. Um, with the exception of the mugs and things like that, um, I have a different link for those. Uh, all you wanna do is get these nice big cinnamon sticks. And I love these. I actually make my cinnamon syrup out of these too. Um, I just like to rub them together here a little bit. It just starts to get that cinnamon oil starting to go here. And then I just like to tuck these guys right down into there. So the whole idea here is this is like a giant kind of Brown. And the cinnamon sticks serve a purpose here. It was the cinnamon and the spices that was really alluring in what kind of became the genesis for why Magellan went on his journey to begin with. So nice fitting for the drink. With this one, we're gonna need a long straw. This is a nice big old mug here. So I'm gonna pull out my nice little octopus bended bone colored straw here. Um, this comes from Surfside Sips. I love this little octopus guy that's on here. Looks real cool, fits in nice. It's gonna go right down into there. Work that right down into the bottom of that mug. There we go. And there you have it, everybody. That's it. A drink fit for a chief. Chief Lapu Lapu. Let's give it a taste. It's good. Um, ooh, 
Yeah. I mean, where, where do you begin with it? Uh, it's a great tasting kind of traditional, I would call traditional kind of tiki drink. It has that. It's sweet. It's it's citrusy. Um, it's bright. You have this bright, sweet flavor that comes through in it. Um, the rums play real nice. You get a little bit of funk from the Jamaican. Um, you get some nice flavor in here from this Denison Three Star that if you used another light rum, I really think that you would miss. Um, that's why I always tell people, make sure you get a good tasting white rum. Um, this is fantastic, fantastic drink. This, I would say, is if you get somebody who's brand new to Tiki and try to Mai Tai, and they go, oh yeah, there's a little bit too much rum flavor in that for them, like it's, because that's a very rum forwardy uh, drink. This one, the rum folds in nice, but it's a good, I would say, introduction to rum, um, where in Tiki, so that you can taste it, but it's not so overwhelming, and you're gonna wanna keep going back for these. And then you're gonna realize how dangerous Tiki is, that if you have like three or four of these, you're gonna be pretty, pretty toasted. Um, there's three ounces of rum in this, but uh, you know, there's a lot of other ingredients that help to balance that out real nice. It's a fantastic drink. I love drinking this like pretty much any time of the year. It's one of my wife's favorites. Um, so that's all we got for today. I hope everyone enjoyed today's episode on the Chief Lapu Lapu. I hope you learned a little bit about the Chief himself, as well as his connection to another famous explorer, Ferdinand Magellan. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Why don't you go ahead and check out these videos that we have down here. We have a whole bunch of them. They're on tiki, classic cocktails, and original drinks just by me. Thank you all so much. And until next time, everybody, Kole Maluna.